Hello everybody. Um, today I was going to talk to you about doing business in India. Um, so I'd like to look at the question of what does it mean to do business with India. Um, and what you can see here um, is kind of the earth at night. Um, and you can see this is centered around New Delhi here um, and also Mumbai um, and South India. And you can see parts of Bangladesh. Myanmar and some other regions. So one way to start thinking about uh, how to do business with India um, is looking at the plane flight schedules. Um, so I kind of centered this around Mumbai. Um, one of the reasons for that um, is that many of the companies in India have headquarters in Mumbai. You can see on the top companies, uh, quite a number of them are either in New Delhi or Mumbai. Uh, you can see Kolkata here, Bangalore, Delhi, and so on. Um, but basically, Mumbai, uh, for practical reasons, right being on the ocean front here, um, is a great city. Um, however, it does have a lot of poverty as well. Uh, so you can see from this flight map um, that quite a number of flights are coming out of Mumbai, but a, actually a lot of it is out of uh, New Delhi Airport here, um, and also this airport right here. Um, so, and then Bangalore also being quite a busy hub um, for traffic. Um, and uh, outside of Mumbai, there is a Goa airport right here, uh, you can see, um, that's pretty busy sometimes, um, and uh, some other spots. Uh, so one interesting thing you can do is you can click on the airport, uh, and then if you click more, um, you can get uh, the top route destinations. So you can see that Delhi is a number one spot and Bangalore being uh, number two um, and Goa actually being number three spot. So uh, this is interesting just from the data standpoint. You can kind of see Chennai is pretty busy, Ahmedabad, um, Dubai uh, being an international port, um, Calcutta, Jaipur, and Lucknow. So basically what this means is a lot of people are flying down to here, which is Bangalore, um, and then up to Delhi, um, and uh, that's another big port here. Um, so, And then other than that, uh, also flying over here to Dubai, uh, being a big international destination. So the other way to look at this also is on the flight costs. Um, now, one thing that I would say is very important here uh, is looking at Colombia's cost, uh, being an international city, that's probably the cheapest one of the bunch. Um, and then next cheapest um, is actually gonna be uh, fucking Thailand um, or possibly even Singapore down here. Um, and there is some other, you can see a pretty cheap flight over there to Hanoi. Um, and then there is some very, very cheap flights uh, off here into Vietnam. Um, so that's pretty interesting to see. Um, and then you can also see uh, there is a pretty cheap flight out in here to Bali, a uh, fairly cheap flight over to Manila, um, and even to Taipei uh, City in Taiwan is pretty cheap. So um, that is important to note. Um, now into Europe, uh, you basically get into the $200 flight range um, at the lowest, uh, and you can get all the way over to, uh, I believe, London for $215. Uh, and then you have Rome here being pretty cheap, uh, some Italy, Italy flights and so on being pretty good. Uh, Cairo also being pretty cheap and Istanbul being fairly inexpensive as well. Um, so those are important to note. Um, you can see uh, that that is uh, fairly cheap here. So now it is really amazing how expensive it is to get over to Africa. Um, I would say uh, kind of the secret spot in here um, is right here of Mombasa. So you can get about a $300 flight there. Um, that gives you a pretty safe port location, um, getting access into Nairobi and other areas. And then there's also Johannesburg. Now, uh, surprisingly, it's $400 all the way to Cape Town, um, but that's uh, fairly inexpensive for Africa. Um, and then you have a $350 ticket over to Lagos um, and uh, some other places, but that can be pretty, get pretty expensive pretty quick, uh, especially since these are in six month ranges. So let's just do a check here. So for example, let's say you were to fly to uh, Phuket, Thailand, 
Um, and then you can kind of see the flights uh, from other places uh, with a very cheap flight, $8 uh, to Bangkok, unbelievably cheap. So, uh, and then you have even $39 flight to Singapore, a $100 flight over here to uh, Manila, and then you can see some fairly inexpensive ones also to Hanoi um, and Ho Chi Minh City, and even a pretty good flight here to Bali. Now, for example, let's say you were to fly into Istanbul, um, you can kind of see the other flights uh, here uh, are actually pretty low cost um, in and out of Istanbul, um, especially into Eastern Europe uh, and even into some places in Africa. So taking this back to Mumbai again, um, you can see uh, again, uh, Bengaluru uh, being kind of the uh, cheapest option and also Goa uh, being pretty good uh, price from there so uh, that can mean a lot of difference in terms of doing work with these uh, different locations so there are a number of hotel options um, now one thing I would advise here is that uh, basically the airport is up here um, and most of the stuff is down in here and this could be many miles um, just to get uh, from the airport to uh, downtown uh, so you may want to choose something uh, in this region in here um, and then later on move uh, if you stay for multiple days. Uh, let's look down here at Goa. Uh, this is just south of Mumbai. So if you look at uh, Mumbai, uh, you can basically fly for about $30 from Mumbai all the way to Goa, which is right over here. So uh, the airport in Goa uh, is right down in here. Um, so you can fly in, um, but the main city, uh, most attractions are basically in here. So uh, it may be an option even to look at the beaches up in here as well. Um, so it is a little bit difficult um, just getting around. Um, it's not a whole lot of miles, maybe 10 miles or so from the airport. Um, so not too bad, um, but still um, could cost some money uh, to get there. Um, so, uh, but if you zoom in, you can basically see quite a number of hotels uh, kind of along it, uh, near the airport um, and then kind of along the beach area over here. Um, if you zoom in, you can start to see some of them. So there's a couple of them here, uh, $34 and so on. So, um, and it can be a little bit pricey um, for a month. Uh, if you think about it, $30 a night um, would put you back around 600 to $700 a month. Um, so it may be important to find um, kind of a lower cost hotel uh, depending on what your budget is. So I'd say of interest here is Bangalore or Bangalore, however you want to pronounce it. So the airport is quite a number of miles outside of town, um, so that could be quite a problem. Um, just right there, you're going to be spending uh, some money just to get into downtown. Um, now, I noticed that on the actual prices, um, there's actually pretty expensive hotels. Um, and you're actually talking about not even being on the oceanfront um, and being quite pricey. So it can be quite pricey um, here in uh, Bangalore. So as an alternative, it may be possible just to fly to Kochi, another uh city on the coast here um, there is also um, another really nice city right here um, you can fly to um, for uh, $41 so um, this is all from Mumbai um, here so I just noticed this uh, that the Cochin airport near Kochi is quite far uh, from uh, downtown so that may actually be uh, kind of a trouble um, troubling point so the other option uh, would be to fly from Mumbai all the way over to Colombo, um, and if you look at there, um, the airport actually is uh, reasonably in the downtown area. Looks like a pretty fast <coughs> expressway right along the ocean front that you can get uh, into downtown Colombo as well. So that may be uh, there may be some buses and some other things uh, that can help uh, with that. So interestingly, you can see on the price sheet here um, coming in from the airport. Um, that basically it's uh, a little bit more pricey than uh, Mumbai maybe, um, but you can see uh, some affordable places here um, quite near downtown um, as well.
So one thing you might want to do is investigate this little slider option. Um, and now you can see that there's pricing here uh, around basically $50 a night uh, and then the average being more like $22 a night. Um, so that's uh, just depends, but there's basically two kind of hump areas here. Um, and you can certainly uh, play around the slider and see what price ranges you like. So let's just say uh, you wanted to fly across the country uh, and go to here. Um, you can see this is the spot here right on the ocean front. Um, the airport is right there. Um, so the kind of interesting thing um, is basically where to access the beach uh, and where that beach might be. So um, there is kind of a beach down in here and then there's a couple of kind of other spots right along here. So it is kind of a debate um, where it might be nicer um, to spend the time. So most of the hotels uh, are actually on this side here, which is great. Um, so you're kind of close to the airport and you can get in here. Um, now you can do this little 15 minute walk thing um, and select and kind of see uh, what the distance is here. So here's uh, one hotel, for example. So uh, one of the weird things that I've been avoiding is kind of Northern India here um now this can be quite a populated region uh and definitely there's a lot of money to be made in new delhi for instance um, but i've kind of avoided that topic um one of the reasons is just there's so much pollution um and i kind of wanted to keep people away from the pollution uh, especially in this area so there can just be a tremendous amount it's hard to appreciate uh, how much pollution can get trapped in here um, if you look at this relief map you can kind of see what happens the mountain ranges here kind of trap a lot of that poop uh, pollution and population and it kind of gets trapped right in here um, so here's a NASA worldview just from the other day uh, and you can see um, that there's certain regions on earth that just have a tremendous amount of pollution and even this you can start to see a lot of pollution coming off of here from Mumbai um, and even that might be uh, from Pakistan and other areas but this is just heavy heavy pollution um, you can't even see the ground uh, in some areas. So uh, also in China, you can see this is kind of just terrible spots. So uh, that's something to really watch out for. So I would say having the fresh air come off the coast um, really can help a lot. Uh, Sri Lanka looks like it's got pretty clean air most days, um, although there is a lot of people there too. So, um, and this is kind of a greener coast line. You can see um, this is a, a live image just from yesterday. Uh, as you can kind of see the pollution kind of sneaking in here uh, out of Mumbai and maybe just traffic uh, driving uh, driving around in these areas. So that could be a very big problem, um, not to be underestimated um, when trying to do business uh, in India, for instance. Here's kind of a global map so you can kind of see um, where the problems are. And essentially, there's just certain areas that have very unhealthy amounts of uh, pollution so uh, some of those are kind of in the United States um, but certainly uh, India and parts of China are very bad so unbelievably at night you can kind of see um, how this all works there's basically this pollution block uh, that kind of comes in through here um, Bangladesh isn't as responsible for it but certainly um, the traffic in here and then Mumbai is actually getting quite a lot of uh, traffic um, just uh, through here and here um, and also along the coast. So it really cleans up uh, back in there. So you can kind of see on this image, uh, I can load another day here so you can see. So uh, it's pretty bad, maybe even worse on this day, but there's still some clouds up there. So kind of cleaning up that atmosphere a little bit. Um, but in general, um, there is some spots along here that are pretty fresh air driven um, and along the coastline. I think this image kind of sums up uh, what's been going on. But you can see it kind of travels down the valley with uh, the river here. Uh, and then it kind of gets most polluted in here. And you can kind of see a couple images here about how bad it is. So there's been some very bad days uh, where it even comes off of here and kind of leaves and comes the reverse way um, as well. So doing business in India, uh, what do you do? Um, so first of all, looking at a map like this, you can kind of see... Uh, population is so that may not always be the best place uh, to do business for example you might be able to make a little bit more money in New Delhi than in Mumbai um, but
but it's certainly uh, nice to be on the coastline here. So, um, and then there are some alternatives, um, even outside of India, uh, in Sri Lanka, which is still fairly Indian, if you would say. Um, and then there's some uh, other coastal towns uh, up in here um, that look interesting too. So you kind of have some of this geography of the coastline uh, that's pretty close here, um, along here too. So India just has a real lot of people uh, involved in doing business in India. And certainly this map can give you an idea um, if you are doing uh, business in Mumbai or uh, Bangalore um, or even Goa and other areas. You can kind of see uh, how that's kind of connected at a detailed level uh, in here um, in terms of the business locally. Um, you might also want to look at an import and export map uh, like this one. Um, you can see on the import side, uh, they're basically doing a lot of work with the United States um, and China, and even more so uh, with China um, there. You can see on the export side, um, they're doing about $50 billion of exports and maybe $20 billion uh, with China. So, you, But you can see certain details, uh, like they're doing a lot of work with South Africa here, um, Indonesia, uh, and you can see uh, UAE being pretty high on the list here, uh, being about half that, that small little country right there, getting about half the business uh, that the entire United States gets. Um, so little details like that uh, certainly can tell you uh, some details about uh, what's going on in India. Here you can see Nigeria uh, being pretty high too, uh, and also Brazil uh, being pretty big. Um, so outside of the United States uh, and China, um, you can see that the Dubai is a pretty important place uh, here. And we started to see that on the uh, transportation route list. Um, and you can see that somewhat um, from this map as well. Um, this shows you the shipping routes. So you can kind of see uh, kind of the coastal lines here and quite a number of ships uh, right out of here, uh, in, you know, headed out of Mumbai um, and then kind of coming up the coastline here um, and maybe even visiting certain spots uh, on the ocean front here. So it also is very wise to look at the airplane map. Um, so you can see a lot of traffic right here in Mumbai and an extreme amount of traffic coming in here to uh, New Delhi, at least this time of day. And look at all this traffic right here into Thailand. Um, so quite a busy airport there in Thailand. Um, and, uh, you know, basically in southern India, you can sort of see uh, Bangalore here, um, right there. So, uh, and, you know, actually uh, Sri Lanka actually being not so busy right now at this very instant. Um, and then a lot of traffic going to Mumbai. So, uh, what I did is, again, looking at this list here, uh, you can get, uh, click on the port, and then you click on more, uh, and then it'll take you to the list here. So you can see uh, 380 so flights. So a lot of going to Bangalore, uh, Goa being very popular, um, Chennai uh, being pretty big there, um, but uh, and Dubai. So, uh, but basically this Dubai gives you kind of a big hint because it's not even in the country um, and there's quite a lot of flights going there. So um, that's a pretty interesting kind of uh, detail uh, to think about. Um, just that uh, this city right here and this is kind of really connected more so than a lot of people believe, uh, maybe about the business uh, in India. Um, and that can kind of give you some ideas. So I didn't really look at uh, airport here uh, for Delhi, but we can do that really quick uh, just to see uh, what the ports are. Um, and you can see um, Mumbai being uh, number one, uh, Bangalore being number two, uh, Calcutta being a big one there, Poon, um, and Ahmedabad, uh, let's see, Ahmedabad. Chennai, uh, Gar, Goa being pretty popular, and Lucknow. Uh, now Lucknow, uh, again, uh, when you look at that Lucknow, this is basically this area right here, so people flying from here to here. So there's quite a lot of business uh, in this area, but um, it is actually kind of a poorer area as well. Um, and so it's important to think about everything uh, when trying to do business uh, in India. Um, uh, let me just think about a couple of things and I'll get right back. So one interesting thing is to think about the temperature uh, in India and you can see uh, quite hot year-round um, 
up into the 90s uh, almost every day. So uh, Mumbai stays about like that. Now, interestingly, you can see in down in Colombia, Sri Lanka, temperature um, actually stays even more stable. It's near the equator, um, and, but you can see around 88 or so uh, degrees, um, and these lows uh, kind of being around here. And you actually get a little more rain uh, in Colombo than you do uh, in Mumbai, for instance. The daylight is something to think about. You know, it got uh, pretty dark here around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. Uh, where I live. Um, but you see about 12 hours of daylight um, here uh, per day, uh, which is kind of nice to have. Um, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of night, uh, being near the equator. So there are a number of other places to think about. Uh, even though you're not working directly with India, um, you know some places like uh, Phuket, Thailand, Singapore, um, and even out to Bali um, or Vietnam. So Vietnam actually looks uh, very affordable. Uh, flying to and from uh, Mumbai. So that would be one thing to really think about. Um, if you are an Indian, um, there's kind of uh, a pretty expensive price tag to work with Europe. You have to fly all over the Middle East um, just to get out to Europe and do business with Europeans. Um, but there are some definite some options, uh, including Australia. You can see some uh, fairly affordable flights uh, comparatively, uh, but it's a little more expensive than getting to Europe. So um, but some of that might change in the future. So you can see um, there's quite a lot of options um, to work with um, and even in Africa. So uh, I would definitely recommend uh, looking into these Vietnam options, uh, something new for me to think about, um, being affordable flights, uh, perhaps the most affordable flights out of Mumbai. Um, and also uh, looking at working with uh, Indonesia here um, being pretty affordable um, but there's actually a huge amount of population uh, down in Indonesia and you can kind of start to see that uh, but actually with the night lights um, you can see the main island here um, of Indonesia kind of being uh, pretty busy with lighting but uh, there's certainly a lot of electricity uh, being produced in India um, and you can see Thailand as well, um, having a lot of light here and then parts of China. Um, but really, there's nothing really that compares to the amount of electricity that really India is using right now. It's really uh, quite amazing. Uh, internationally, you can kind of, as you zoom out, uh, you can kind of compare um, different areas. Middle East is kind of using up a lot of electricity as well, um, you'd say, um, but uh, certainly there's lots of light here. Um, the United States, of course, um, does have quite a lot of light as well, especially on the East Coast. Um, you see down here in LA, um, some other areas. Um, but uh, India is definitely lit up at night, um, and there's a lot of people there, um, a lot of business going on. Um, but again, I would say be careful uh, when thinking about doing business with India. You might say that uh, the government is the way to go, uh, but uh, the uh, pollution air quality and temperature in New Delhi is actually not really that desirable um, from time to time, and you're pretty far from the ocean front uh, when you do have other options to work with in India, uh, particularly down along in here. So, um, and I would definitely consider these cities as very interesting. Um, so, and actually, a lot of the uh, explorers first came along the coast here, and you will see some uh, churches and some kind of more Western uh, philosophy uh, in here. Um, and then some different um, ideas, maybe more Asian, uh, as you head out into here and Myanmar and so on. So again, I would definitely use this uh, flight guide uh, to help understand uh, what the prices might be. Um, and sometimes uh, it's actually just kind of surprising. Uh, flying direct uh, can save you a little bit more money, but it's nice to kind of make some partial stops along the way. Um, and even some of these islands uh, may be interesting. Uh, you can see Point Blair here. Um, but uh, basically, and there's a little island out here. But um, so, but these are kind of volcanic islands uh, and so on, uh, not really connected to the mainland, and they may be more pricey as a result. But, uh, but in general, um, you know, what, what has been happening, if you look at the shipping lines, if I zoom out here, you can kind of start to see how this all works with Asia. So basically, Asia comes up through here and they bring the shipping lines either around here down to Africa and around Africa, 
And then a lot of that even heading to the United States. Now these green ones are uh, cargo vessels. Uh, the red ones are oil. Uh, so there is quite a lot of oil being shipped. Um, and actually you can see this off the coast of Africa and Nigeria, um, quite a number of oil vessels here. And then also heading out of here in the Middle East. Uh, but the point is that um, Singapore uh, being at the tip here, um, if you look at a regular map, um, which let's see if we can get that. So you kind of have to head through this channel um, to get around in through here. So India basically, um, you know, having to work kind of at a rest point here in Phuket, Thailand, uh, and then Singapore down in here. You see Kuala Lumpur, uh, so on. And, but that being pretty interesting, so you kind of uh, have to pass Singapore. Um, and you don't necessarily have to hit um, Bangkok here, um, but you can kind of go straight over to Vietnam. Um, and a lot of the flights uh, heading out of Mumbai uh, were pretty cheap uh, in the lower than $200, $150 range, uh, heading into Hanoi uh, and some other places on the coast of Vietnam. So that certainly is very interesting to look at. Um, and then also looking at Manila as an option to work with uh, in addition to uh, India. So, um, and there is some uh, kind of uh, differences in religion. It's primarily Hinduism and Buddhism as you had uh, kind of east here towards China. So um, a lot of that kind of comes from Nepal um, up in the mountains here um, and then it, it kind of the religion changed. Um, so business kind of does change uh, as you cross this Myanmar area. Um, and this has been a pretty difficult place to do business in. That's kind of a floodplain here in Yangon um, and so on. So uh, it makes it pretty complicated with all that pollution coming out into this uh, sea here. Um, but once you get to around in here, you start to get the water gets to be clean again. Um, much less pollution uh, and more coastal cities here. So um, now, uh, you know, I would say Jakarta is an interesting option. Um, my mom is actually uh, born in Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, so, but uh, the interesting thing is there's quite a heavy population here in Jakarta. It is just packed with people. So this main island, as you can see, has quite a lot of light. Um, so some of the other islands in Indonesia may be more interesting to work with. Um, but it does get kind of dangerous as you get out into here because there's just not much uh, going on. It's just basically wildlife. Um, I would say uh, staying away from the island of Borneo here uh, would be a wise suggestion because it's primarily for wildlife, I would say, and not really for business. There are a couple ports along here, but um, it is uh, one of the last refugees for wildlife on Earth. Um, and it is very close to the equator. Um, Stuff, stuff like that so something to think about um but uh you can kind of see china and japan up here so this actually being quite far when you consider uh having to get by boat uh off of india you know kind of going all this way uh, and then trying to get the, through the entire coast here um over to Phuket, thailand uh, being quite a journey uh, for someone by sailboat uh trying to do business uh with them. Now, on the Marine Travel Guide, you can kind of see the lines here, uh, and you can see they kind of go directly through here, or this pathway being quite common, and this mostly being oil um, being along this line, and then this is basically a lot of green, so that is cargo ships, so cargo kind of going this way, and oil kind of coming from the Middle East uh, through here, and then maybe over to China. So this route through here being kind of an oil route, um, maybe heading right into China. So, uh, and maybe Shanghai and basically this is Beijing over in here. So that being quite a long journey, um, but it does kind of go around the tip here. India, uh, a lot of people uh, refuel uh, here in Singapore. Um, so this being kind of a good halfway point uh, between uh, the Middle East uh, and uh, Beijing and China and Shanghai. So, uh, and even heading up to Japan. So, but there's a lot of cargo also coming off of here in China and you see all those green ships uh, and even in Japan, uh, maybe shipping cars and auto industry. Um, and then heading up into here, you kind of see uh, not a whole lot. Uh, now the trends heading out 
across the Pacific, there's not really any kind of standard route, but a lot of that does kind of head over to Los Angeles. Um, and that kind of being the next uh, kind of like major port uh, shipping area for business. So 90 something percent of all the goods manufactured and made are shipped at some point. So the shipping map actually is more valuable than we probably realize. Um, you kind of see some of these flows uh, across the ocean, um, maybe even here, you can see kind of heading out into uh, Seattle area and Northern California, but LA being the biggest port, something like 40% of all the goods in the United States do actually pass through LA. Um, you see some here kind of going down to the Panama Canal um, and even heading over to the East Coast of the United States. So that gets very far away from India, but you can kind of see how India gets involved here. So essentially, um, you know, when you start working with Europe, uh, you basically go through the Middle East. Um, and it's interesting that most of those flights out of Mumbai are actually going to Dubai. Um, and then there was kind of a big flight in from England uh, that we did notice. So, uh, and you look on this here, you can kind of see as you zoom out, uh, where these flights are. So uh, you can see London, England being 214, Lisbon being fairly affordable here too. So, uh, and I think this is nearby kind of stuff, but uh, if we look at this and zoom out, you can kind of see some of the major airports uh, and prices. So it being uh, progressively more expensive, but in general, the interesting point to make is that if you are Indian, um, Working with Europe actually isn't as logical and making sense as you'd think, um, but certainly the Middle East uh, is very much a part of Western Indian uh, philosophy and thoughts. So, um, but uh, looking forward to the future, um, maybe some of that may change uh, towards, uh, if you're really thinking about working down in Australia, I have a friend uh, from Bangladesh, and some of his family lives out in Australia. So that's something to think about. And here's kind of the global flight map. Um, you can kind of see uh, what's going on in India. A lot of stuff going in and out of Tokyo here. So you can kind of see um, as this kind of, uh, you know, business is kind of being done, um, there's definitely Thailand here uh, and then Tokyo and then China here as well. So United States getting quite a lot of flights. Uh, South America getting quite a number of flights. Uh, kind of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, coastal line, and then kind of heading up into Europe. Um, so still Europe getting quite a lot um, of flights um, here. Um, and Africa actually getting not so many uh, flights, but quite a lot of flights maybe down here into Johannesburg and then also Cape Town. Um, but it looks like actually more is around uh, Johannesburg for some reason at this point at this particular time. So Australia getting quite a number of flights here, uh, heading over to Brisbane here, and then uh, I guess uh, Sydney down here. Um, so, uh, but you can kind of see, um, actually the flight kind of path looks like uh, Thailand and then maybe uh, Jakarta, Indonesia down in here. Um, so uh, maybe just judging from this kind of mix here, um, you know, India and China, uh, thinking about working together, being part of the mainland here, uh, and working uh, more closely uh, actually with Australia. Um, definitely is one interesting uh, idea. I guess I'll look at this open infrastructure map really quick uh, with you, but you can kind of see, um, if you zoom out here, uh, India definitely has quite a lot of electric grid here. China basically being uh, more so than India. But when you look at India compared to the rest of the world and even the United States, which I'm not gonna do here, um, there's quite a lot of electrical lines being done here. And you can add telecoms, oil and water. Um, so you can kind of see some of these telecom lines here. Um, I did do a telecom map uh, for you. Um, and you can see Mumbai being kind of a pretty big center um, for a lot of the infrastructure. So you can see they kind of have pretty steady uh, internet um, here in Mumbai um, being kind of the main internet hub for all of India. Um, and that's certainly something to think about. Um, 
when doing business in India. So this is the IMF uh, data mapper here. Uh, you can see uh, that the average Indian is actually making $2.47,000 per year, which is actually quite low. Uh, you can see about $12,000 per year uh, in China and 10,000 or 11,000 in Mexico. Um, average being 75. Now I'm not sure how accurate these numbers are, um, but you can kind of see uh, that uh, different parts of the world, uh, you know, basically being about $7,000 per year, uh, the average being $13,000 per year, and advanced economies being around 53. So these are the advanced, these are kind of uh, the world, and this is some of the emerging markets. So uh, but I would say, you know, that is really low. Um, it's just such a low number to think about. Um, certainly getting up to 10,000 or even 13,000 like in China uh, would be quite a good feat for India to work on. So how they do that, um, one of the questions is being so close to some of the Middle East. Um, the interesting thing is that India is doing a lot of work with Dubai, um, but uh, I don't know how much that is really helping other than in the oil industry. Um, it may be way wiser to work with uh, countries in East Africa than it may be to work with Dubai. Um, but uh, a lot of the money is coming out of Dubai, so there is money still there. And at least for the next 10 years, from what I understand, the oil industry will be pretty solid uh, in Dubai. But that's only 10 years, um, and there's certainly... A lot of work to be done in Africa. Now, the interesting thing about Africa is most of that work is actually being done in Nigeria. Uh, a lot of the West African, most of the people live here in West Africa. Actually, uh, when you look at the nighttime map too, you can kind of see that uh, here. You can see most of this light is over here uh, in West Africa. So on the East African side though, um, as Johannesburg down there um, being surprisingly busy, um, flights were pretty affordable uh, from Mumbai over to Johannesburg, but basically East Africa. So um, it is actually a lot easier just to work with Asia and the environment is so much better uh, in general. So that's something to think about um, when doing business with the rest of the world. Um, you know, a lot of this rivers, everything runs this way and there is kind of a big divide uh, between Africa and Asia and basically India kind of being at the point of that intersection uh, and kind of almost deciding uh, how to work. So I think another interesting option is for Africans uh, to work more in India. Um, and that could be really complicated. It may be wiser uh, to work with places like Indonesia first uh, and then kind of come back to working with India um, if you are an African. So you can kind of see um, how this might work uh, in West Africa. Um, but basically, uh, this is kind of Kenya over here, so a lot of this kind of people coming down from the hills um, and into the coastline, and Mombasa being pretty important here um, as a port um, right here in Kenya. Um, and uh, Mozambique also kind of having a port access here point and uh, being a tip city here. Cape Town kind of uh, almost being uh, like a Sri Lanka point um, for Africa. So uh, exactly how you do business with India if you're an African, you know, it's basically right along the coastline here. Um, and uh, certainly uh, there is more land uh, and housing. So basically the housing industry um, in uh, Nigeria is actually booming quite a lot. Um, Nigeria is going to be uh, in the top four of countries in the world, um, maybe just after uh, India and China and the United States um, soon. So they're thinking a lot of people would be living here in Lagos. Um, but that's still kind of West Africa. Um, and there is a possibility um, maybe down here in Mombasa uh, to see quite a large uh, population uh, kind of coming into this region of Africa, um, maybe kind of leaving uh, some of this Cape Town stuff. Um, but it is pretty pretty beautiful in Cape Town. Um, you kind of see a lot of the coastline here uh, of Africa uh, as you kind of head up along the coast. And some of this is actually floodplain almost. Um, so it can be kind of uh, weird to be building housing in some of those areas. So if you see what happened in China, um, 
you know, India basically, when you're doing business in India, basically a lot of that came along here on the Ganges River um, and then the Sindhu River here up in Pakistan. So population is basically up along here um, and also in China. So basically this is Beijing and Shanghai over in here. So basically this is where the population is in China. Um, and then also in Thailand, a lot of this population ended up right in here. So basically on these floodplain areas, um, there was kind of a lot of people that ended up doing uh, business and work there. So it's not to be underestimated, um, but there is a lot of pollution uh, as well. So you kind of have to think about doing some trade-offs. Um, and even it gets a little bit complicated here because if you're trying to do business in this region, this actually becomes Bangladesh and Myanmar. So you're not even really doing business with India, um, but you're actually doing business with Bangladesh um, by the time you get out into this region anyway. So it kind of raises an interesting question. If you're trying to do business here, um, why not also do business here? Um, and New Delhi being basically back over in there. So, so, you know, it's kind of an interesting debate. You know, we have such a large population of people in India. That population keeps growing. Uh, Africans population is going to keep growing where is the wildlife going to go um, and that's an important question uh, to think about so as we kind of uh, rethink about um, where you want to live if you live in India um, it may be smart um, to actually move and kind of like reclaim a lot of this land to farmland and to uh, wild life so uh, that is hard to see here uh, you can kind of see all the rivers in India as you zoom in here and some of the mountain ranges so it is interesting to think about that uh, and kind of say um, maybe the wildlife uh, should kind of reclaim and there is some mangroves and some interesting uh, land that's being used um, for wildlife uh, here in Bangladesh but the pollution is just so great so uh, that here coming mostly from Lucknow area so that just gets to be a disaster uh, in here and it just even up into the Himalayas uh, I don't know how high you have to go uh, to get above that pollution uh, but it may be terrible so it makes me almost think about not even wanting to visit a place like a Nepal, Kathmandu, um, just because the pollution being so great. So how do you get the wildlife there um, is a big question. And actually what's going on is a lot of wildlife is actually coming up back into here uh, and trying to live um, kind of back up in these areas. So, um, and Myanmar as well. So um, it is super important um, to try to balance uh, the work with uh, what's going on with the Earth's ecosystem in general. There are some interesting maps to look at with population density. Here is kind of a picture of India, uh, and you can kind of see they got some other ones of Southeast Asia in general, and you can see those as well. Um, this is the United States of America, uh, but uh, you might want to grab, take a look at them, and you kind of see um, how much population there really is in here, and this is just huge. Uh, through here so um, and that's actually just a concern I would say in general you can see Mumbai being quite large here and then all on the coast as well um, so I don't know where these animals and you know this is kind of near the equator um, there's a lot of green here um, and it's stuff to think about soil map is kind of interesting to see um, so you can kind of use some of that to gauge uh, where it would be safe or not safe uh, to build and construct things. You can see these are primarily uh, floodplains here and even in Florida, um, that's becoming a little bit of a question. Um, and you can kind of see that floodplain here. Um, and there's also a geological map um, that could be 3D as well. Um, and you can get a kind of a 3D map. Um, and you can kind of see here Bangladesh uh, in India kind of being on the geological plane so you can kind of say a lot of these areas uh, may give you the same feeling uh, if both the soil is the same uh, and the geology is the same you're basically talking about doing business kind of in the same area um, in general so you can see there's this yellow sliver here um, and kind of a more uh, pink areas in here so Certainly that could be quite a difference uh, in how to work there. So 
and this being somewhat uh, desert oriented land here and you, so you can see the soil is basically not so great for anything uh, except for desert uh, so that's being kind of a concern uh, as you try to do business uh, in some of these areas um, so you may want to think uh, twice about that um, and you see over here in China uh, being quite a lot of floodplain here um, and actually quite a lot of people living back in here too so um, that to me is kind of you may want to think a little bit uh, actually what's happening here in Shanghai is a lot of the uh, shipping industry actually has moved out into here um, and kind of the south part of Shanghai so and even here you can see Hong Kong being out here not really being exactly in the flood plain of the Pearl River um, so there are certain areas um, that you can kind of rethink about um, as you think about doing business there um, and that can be helpful uh, water problems are also interesting to think about now this is not to say that the United States does not have water problems you can see out west primarily uh, in Southern California uh, having a lot of water problems so it's not any worse say Southern California problems being pretty much pretty bad um, as it is and some parts of here uh, the western United States so no, but in general uh, this part of India, um, you know, basically near New Delhi does have that water problem to think about. Um, just a tremendous amount of population. Um, you can also see this is similar to southern Spain or even Italy uh, having basically the same uh, type of water problem as they have in even England here uh, having <coughs> a pretty bad water problem. So I think see like Mumbai on the coast here isn't as bad. Um, I'm actually surprised to see this Shanghai water problem here because uh, if you look at the map, you can kind of see the drainage here, uh, which usually you have an aquifer underground uh, of some sort. So uh, you can look at several types of these maps. Uh, there is water supply, a map, and this will show you <coughs> where the aquifers are, um, but then you take the demand into consideration uh, you basically have uh, different demands as a different number of people. So you take demand, it's kind of the water stress <coughs> is a comparison with the water supply and water demand. So again, this does support kind of what we've been talking about, uh, kind of <coughs> working along the western coast of India and maybe even some places uh, right in here and possibly even Sri Lanka. Now it is pretty bad to see uh, Sri Lanka. You can kind of zoom in here. Uh, and see, uh, kind of strange, I got this strange cough. Let me get some water. Actually, give me a second. Sorry if this is maybe too much information, but uh, there's certainly a lot of factors to think about. Um, and you can see uh, that you don't have as much of a water problem at the end of this uh, river because basically this is where the aquifers usually are uh, in the United States. Uh, the aquifer is basically in the south uh, near Mississippi River in general so uh, a lot of that is true so in the long term it is kind of surprising to see water problems in here I um, mean you see some water problems there um, not as bad looks like a water problem here in Mumbai in general you can see uh, pretty bad uh, spots there uh, red and then being yellow uh, just outside of Mumbai um, so uh, Goa not being so bad Kerala not being so bad uh, Colombo um, maybe Actually, Sri Lanka having some water problems in general. So, uh, you know, it is just interesting. Uh, you know, Africa, you see the Middle East kind of having water problems all over there, but you can see Africa, West Africa actually doing pretty good uh, for water problems. Lagos kind of having a little bit of water problems, Dakar, and so on. Um, so, around the region, oh, excuse me, around the major cities, you simply see some water problems. So, Cape Town having a major water problem. Um, that's primarily has to do with uh, how the drainage works so you just have to have these drainage areas uh, where the aquifers underground water is so um, and then obviously these are freshwater lakes um, so there may not be as much of a problem uh, here uh, in those regions um, <coughs> but uh, <coughs> it is certainly interesting look at these maps kind of see uh, in Indonesia, uh, where that water problem is, uh, Philippines, 
and some areas in mainland. So I would say the pollution map is one of the more helpful maps uh, you should look at. Um, and certainly looking at the day-to-day -day map uh, over the years that I've done studying these maps. Uh, India, if you go back, you know, 10 years, 20 years back, it's still pretty bad uh, for many, many years. And you can see uh, even over a few days here in China, it kind of changes uh, from day to day. But that's just a lot of pollution. Uh, maybe some of that is kind of hidden under the clouds there you kind of see these pockets here um, and this uh, may be partially related to some of the geography so you can see there's kind of some spots here and here where maybe the pollution would sneak around um, but these valleys here um, this is where pollution gets caught uh, between the mountains uh, just can't get over the mountains so uh, but certainly that's something to think about so I hope you enjoyed this study of India and how to do business with India um, and looking at quite a number of factors. Definitely look at this Earth at Night map um, to get you started. Um, and if you have a particular town you're thinking about working with, um, even though it's not Mumbai, you can definitely look at the price and the cost of the flight um, and try to uh, how to uh, reorganize your business a little bit to do in a maybe more healthy and fun area of India <clears throat> and even look at how to work with other areas uh, outside of India um, and I would say um, you know no matter who you work with you're always going to have a great experience just try to uh, make that a great experience um, there's all kinds of people all throughout India um, and some certainly some very interesting people living up in the mountains here um, as well as along the ocean front and along all these rivers um, and different areas um, you can always find some great people uh, to work with um, so, but uh, maybe steering that a little bit towards uh, some healthier environments um, <clears throat> and looking for some ways uh, to kind of think beyond the next 10 years uh, if your business is going to last. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is going into Dubai right now um, and how to look at new areas uh, to work with. So certainly the flight maps were a big part of our discussion. Um, Looking at that carefully, um, there's certainly a lot of cheap flights around India, um, and the hotel system is uh, pretty good there, um, especially in the larger cities. Uh, you can often find hotels uh, for $20, $30 a night, uh, $30 or so a night, I would say, um, and uh, <clears throat> that can make it possible uh, to stay there for a month or so. Uh, now, on the now, in terms of visas, uh, basically you can stay for 180 days. You do need to file uh, online to get that visa. Um, I have not gone through the whole process, um, but you can go through the uh, process um, and fill that out online and then get yourself 180 days uh, in India. I would say the other thing is thinking about the transportation system, the road system. Um, you know, just getting uh, from one side of the country to another, there can be a lot of dirt roads. Uh, not anything like uh, what you have in the United States, um, but actually there is quite a good road system as well. I was very surprised at how suburban a lot of this place in northern India looked, um, and uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, maybe it seems like there's a lot of people, but I was actually surprised. There's street view um, for most of India, but this is actually the electrical map. Uh, you may consider thinking about the electrical map, um, just where you want to do business uh, with. Um, kind of uh, certain areas do have better power infrastructure than others um, so that it can be a big factor um, in how to do business so certainly uh, what I would do is if you're trying to do some business there in India you can look at the street view um, in China and other places you may have to use a different website other than Google um, they have Baidu in China uh, but the uh, amount of street view stuff that they have uh, is quite amazing uh, in India, uh, you can see uh, basically uh, where has been actually checked out quite carefully. You can see Sri Lanka has just been totally checked out. Uh, Bengaluru, uh, Goa being pretty carefully looked at. Um, Mumbai here, uh, Ahmedabad, um, and New Delhi, uh, and then up here into Pakistan, uh, Lahore, and some other areas. Bangladesh also being very carefully uh, checked out. 
uh, here uh, and parts of other India. So um, that can be very helpful uh, in general. Um, I really enjoyed uh, checking a lot, a lot of the beach fronts here. Um, you can see street by street uh, pretty much uh, where you'd like to go before you get there. It is kind of uh, helpful to kind of put your imagination uh, into its best and try to think what it'd be like to have the sounds of being on the street. Um, and here you can see the International Airport of Fergoa uh, and then kind of heading over to the main town. Um, and then you can see some of the beachfront uh, views here. I won't really do any of those, but you can place your cursor over it and kind of see <coughs> quickly what some of the streets may look like. Um, and what the life may be like. Uh, sometimes it's not very accurate because uh, they film really early in the morning, not really during noon time uh, when there may be a lot of traffic uh, and some other things so, to be concerned about. So that's something to really think about. Um, there's also a tremendous amount of videos online uh, for each of these cities. I can just type in Goa, India on YouTube and you can see quite a lot. Um, but uh, basically Street View is very helpful uh, and you can kind of browse by pressing this on and off and see and then they have little photo spheres um, that you can get 360 degree views and so on. So um, the hotel thing uh, is also very helpful as well. So you might also just do a search. Uh, AI is actually becoming better and better. Uh, I would even suggest uh, ChatGPT uh, opening eye, uh, but uh, you can see uh, how I started business in India and click on any of these things, which business grows fast in India, um, all of that, how to do business in India, and then you can get people also ask. So this people also ask stuff is just unbelievably helpful, and you can see it just goes on and on uh, with many different advice ideas. So I'm just going to zoom into Mumbai here. Um, so obviously the airport is very important, uh, but in terms of shipping, um, so is the seaports. So you can kind of start to see uh, where those seaports are. And here you can kind of see uh, on the other side of Mumbai um, be kind of a busy seaport. Um, so that wasn't really uh, talked about much here, but um, you can see a lot of pleasure crafts here. Um, and But basically there is a major Mumbai port here. But it is kind of, uh, looks like they had to go kind of quite out into the water here. Quite a number of ships just waiting here, um, maybe to be serviced uh, by the Mumbai Terminal. So here's the Mumbai Terminal. Um, <clears throat> you can see uh, kind of more uh, kind of activity here, um, maybe even naval activity. Um, but uh, certainly uh, interesting. And then you can kind of see uh, some other buds in here, maybe more recreational, um, and just people uh, parking sailboats, um, maybe even people living on sailboats. So uh, so the satellite imagery can be helpful. Uh, you can kind of see uh, maybe some uh, interesting parts of town uh, right in Mumbai, uh, and uh, that can be interesting to see too. So uh, as you, as I have not seen yet, um, I don't think we looked on the street view but this Mumbai stuff kind of does change as you head out into the peninsula here um, it's not necessarily safe in all these areas I don't know if these are some houses or what um, but there could be some interesting uh, people to meet and things uh, but it would be wise to be careful so I think uh, this you can kind of see downtown Mumbai maybe being even be centered around the port so the shipping port uh, shipping data actually is very helpful um, and we can probably zoom out here and even see where these shipping paths cross so um, and actually I think there was quite a lot of flights heading up into here Ahmabad uh, and you can see uh, these ports here being pretty busy as well so this port kind of being uh, extremely busy and then up in here another very busy port so <clears throat> um, those are some alternatives to working with Mumbai um, and I think if we head down to Goa we don't really even see too much traffic at all 
ingoa except for bypassing. So kind of here, and you can see uh, this being kind of a busier port here, um, and uh, this being actually quite a busy port, surprisingly busy port, um, and some other stuff down in here. So the port data uh, can be helpful to look at. Um, I definitely recommend that. Um, and we just learned a couple new things uh, that would be interesting. So last but not least, um, you know, actually, India is actually very poor. So, you know, as you're working with these people, um, you know, definitely trying to get more money coming into India, uh, it would be uh, great to see them uh, paid more. Um, you can see it's pretty much on the same level as Africa. Um, and even uh, getting paid uh, less than even places in South America. So um, that would be something interesting to think about. Um, I do see a lot of business between Africa and Latin America, uh, but basically making the jump, um, India actually is kind of in an interesting position uh, because it's kind of halfway between uh, all these places like China, Europe, and this place. But it's really actually kind of quite far from uh, South America. Um, but there's certainly uh, some people, um, similarities uh, between uh, people in Latin America and India. So, uh, but you can see here, there's just not a whole lot of money uh, being made in India. So certainly it is possible to hire people um, and work with people uh, in India on great projects. So I hope you've enjoyed this study of India and how to do business uh, with India. Uh, let me know if you got any questions. Uh, there's certainly a lot of different ideas on how to do business with India. Um, and I would definitely be interested in hearing from you about what you think uh, it takes to do business in India and how that uh, relates to the rest of the world. Hope this has been very helpful for you.